Hey guys, it's Brian again from Lake Acre Scuba and Marina. I'm fixing to show you a video that I'm not very proud of. Now, it's very difficult for me to show you this video because as a diving professional, I feel that I hold a certain level of credibility that I must maintain because diving is my livelihood. I feel that as a dive instructor, I am a role model. Now, let me give you a quick background of who I am, the diving experience I have, and I'll give you some background to the video you're about to watch. I've been diving for over 28 years. I have a little over 5,000 dives under my belt. I'm a dive instructor for five different training organizations. I hold a course director title and two uh, instructor trainer titles for two of those five agencies. I'm a master instructor for another one, and I'm also a master scuba diver trainer for the last. I dive in all types of environment. Every March I go up north and I do ice diving. I take students up and teach them in overhead environments and ice diving certifications. I'm also a public safety diver and a public safety diving instructor. I teach students how to deal with blacked out conditions, how on a working dive, how to remain calm, relax. I also am a salvage company owner, meaning my company does underwater salvage. We get boats, cars, airplanes, you name it, out of the lake. So I'm constantly on working dives. Being in blacked out overhead environments is not something that's new to me. However, the environments that I dive in, I'm very used to and I have a lot of experiment in or experience in. Anytime I dive, dive a new location, I try to get as much information as possible about the dive site. I'll look the site up on Google Maps, I'll look for underwater maps, or I'll check with my, the local divers of that area to see what they can tell me about the dive site. I do my very best to make sure I'm adequately prepared with redundant air systems or redundant scuba equipment. I also make sure I'm adequately repaired with enough air to do this particular dive. Now the dive that you're about to watch is from Troy Springs of our recent dive trip down to the Florida Springs. It was the last trip or last dive of this trip. Three of us decided to make the dive. Now from the get-go we had many flaws among us. This whole dive trip I'd been diving with a steel 100 with a backup 30 cubic foot pony tank. On this particular dive I went with an aluminum 63. Another diver that was with us had been diving steel 100 doubles the whole trip and decided to go with a steel aluminum 80. The last diver was in steel 100s as he had been for the entire length of the trip, but they were only half full. He was using the steel 100s as a single tank. So we were flawed from the very get-go. We did a very thorough briefing between the three of us. We did our pre-dive safety check and we proceeded with the dive. At a depth of 20 feet, we stopped to review some skills. At a depth of 30 feet, we encountered blacked out conditions. Now once again, this is something I'm used to, I'm comfortable in. The other two divers were not. We decided to end the dive. However, when we signaled to each other, we had lost one of our buddies. Myself and the other diver decided to do a lost buddy procedure, where you search for a minute and come to the surface. During this lost buddy procedure, we ended up losing each other. I also swam into a restriction. I would went into a cave system unknowingly, simply due to the blacked out conditions I could not see where I was going. When I finally made the decision to surface to hopefully find my buddies at the surface, I found myself inside of a cave or even a cavern if you will, in an overhead environment and I was stuck on at least three sides. I really did not know how to get out of this environment. I started to hyperventilate. I started to become overly stressed. I resorted back to my training. I chose not to panic. Now what you're gonna hear in the video is my breathing increase. You're gonna hear these long deep inhales and exhales. and You're gonna hear it go into a hyperventilation. But I was simply resorted back to my training to get me out of this environment. I'd be a liar if I told you I was not spooked, extremely spooked, or if not downright scared during this dive. The overhead environment didn't scare me. The blacked out conditions didn't scare me. But being in a new dive site that I had absolutely no information on other than depth, I was scared. I was also in aluminum 63. I kept trying to calculate my saccharate, or my saccharate in my head to determine whether or not I had enough air even to make it out of this restriction, even to make it to the surface. Now I'm here shooting this video for you so you know I made it out but I want you to see what I experienced. Am I afraid that this video is gonna jeopardize my credibility? Absolutely. But I feel more obligated as a diving professional to show you 
that even us as dive professionals sometimes get ourselves in situations we shouldn't be in. And no matter our training and no matter our experience, sometimes bad things happen. And I hope you learn from this video. Trust me, I know I have. Now, has this stopped me from overhead environment diving? No. Has it stopped me from diving in blacked out conditions? No. But it has it made me more safe and conscious as a diver? Absolutely. As a dive instructor, I really hope you learn from this the same way I did. So pay close attention to this video, and I appreciate you watching.